we're going for the big one. So in this video, we're going to be going through top to bottom a video on tax. No, 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 before you click off, I appreciate that this is a video of intergalactic boredom potentially on the horizon. So in this video, we're going to be going through two topics, why the tax system is broken and how it stops you building longer term wealth. And in the second one, we're going to be talking about how you can use the tax system to your advantage to legally pay less tax. Last time I checked, it was about 21,000 pages. So that's some real .gov shit. Even just a little bit of education about how the tax system works can really help you to save hundreds or potentially even thousands of pounds. And we should ask Lord Melt, Chief Melt, Melter in Chief or something. The PM made like 2.2 million and paid an effective tax rate of like 25%. Frankly, he used some of the methods that we're gonna be talking about. Now the UK purports to have a progressive tax system, which means the more you earn, the more you pay in taxes. And to some degree that's true but this is what the tax system should look like and this is what it actually looks like see how you have these what are called fiscal cliffs so let's just make sure that we're all taking advantage of how the tax system should work and i think it's safe to say that the uk tax system can be let's class it as a category five mess now one of the reasons why this is so important right now is that a lot of tax bans have been frozen for the last couple of budgets and so what that means is that as people get pay increases they are inadvertently getting pulled into higher tax bans and therefore paying more taxes. And as we look at some of these examples, earning more money might actually make you worse off. So let's go into some of the details. Now, the way taxes are calculated can feel like it's more complicated than a Kardashian love triangle, but we're gonna be going through some of the real basics here. And then once we've got that foundational knowledge, we'll then move on to some of the more complicated stuff. Everything is timestamped. So if you feel like you already know this, then feel free to jump ahead. But let's bust this myth right out the gate. Now, some people assume incorrectly that if they get a pay rise, then all of their pay will go into the next marginal tax band. So fundamentally, this is incorrect. So let's just say you're someone who earns £49,000. That makes you a basic rate taxpayer and you pay 20% on your taxes. But if you are fortunate enough to get a pay rise that would take you up to £55,000, then you don't pay 40% on your whole £55,000. You pay the 40% on the difference above the £50,000 threshold. So here are what the tax brackets look like at the moment. So for example, if you earn £60,000, your first £12,570 are tax-free. The next about £37,500 uh, is taxed at 20%, which is your basic rate. And then the last about 10 k you'll pay 40% on. So it is not true to say that if you get a pay rise and you go from one band to another, all of your pay is subject to the new band. That is categorically incorrect. But the problem is ultimately is that means that it can be really difficult to get rich just through your salary because the more you earn, the more you invariably end up paying in taxes. But what you'll also find is that as you move up the tax brackets, there'll be certain benefits which you ultimately lose access to. The higher income child benefit charge is a good example of this. We discussed this in our reaction to the most recent budget where actually if you make over 50 pounds, then you gradually start to lose access to that. But there are some incomes or there are some benefits where if you earn over £100,000, you immediately lose access, even if you're a pound over. And so these create what, what are called fiscal cliffs, where just being a pound over a particular threshold means you completely lose access to some of the benefits that the tax system actually has in place. Now, remember earlier in the video when I said not all income is treated equally. I don't want to sound like a donkey with substance abuse issues, but this is what I'm talking about. So if you work, say, through a limited company and you have a £60,000 profit, what you're basically able to do is you're able to deduct your expenses and then you pay tax on the balance. Now, when you're looking at your personal expenses, you get paid, then you pay taxes, and then you have to deduct your expenses. So this is a fundamentally different way when you look at how businesses are taxed versus how income is taxed. One of the other key differences that we should also be looking at is not only do you have all these allowable expenses which are tax deductible, but the rate that you have to pay from a limited company is also much lower. The current rate of corporation tax is 19%. So we've talked about personal income taxes, we've talked about business taxes, and now investors. Now, I think it's fair to say that some investors pay the least amount of in when it comes to marginal taxes. And this is for a few reasons. The first is capital gains tax. So this is a tax where if you buy something and then you sell it for a profit, you pay tax on your profit. Now, again, immediately, this is considerably different to the way personal tax is charged. So in the UK, the basic rate for capital gains tax is 10% or 18%, kind of depending on what the asset is. And the additional and higher rate bands are 20 and 28%. So again, so immediately you can see that the rates of tax you're gonna get charged are much, much lower 
but you also get the benefit of being able to deduct some of your expenses. And we should point to our valiant leader. Now, Lord Melt over here made about 2.2 million in tax, but he paid an effective rate of about 25%. And that's because the majority of his income, about 1.6 million of it, has come from uh, capital gains rather than from income. His income sits at around 330k. And this is where you can really light the bullshit afterburners, is if you actually look at the proportion of tax that he has paid on his earned income versus his capital gains, you start to see really how this disparity is kind of nakedly on show, to be honest. So now we've covered some of the basics. What are some of the key ways that the tax system is really rigged against people in order to prevent them building longer term wealth. Well, the first is it focuses on income over wealth. So for example, if you take something like council tax, council tax is where your house is basically put into bands from A to H and based on the value of it in 1991 or so, like I, I just someone talk me through their goddamn thinking there, like that is insane, but anyway, but what you invariably find is that the cap is on 320,000 pounds. Now the average value of a house in the UK is about 252,000 or something. But it means that if you live in a 100 million pounds mansion in Kensington in central London, you are paying the same rate of council tax as someone who whose house is worth 320 grand. Like that is an insane way to look at something. And so people who live in multi-million pound homes as a proportion of their kind of overall wealth, they're paying a way, way smaller percent. So whilst it's fair to say that the UK income tax system is kind of progressive, despite all these fiscal cliffs, when we look at some of the other taxes outside of income taxes, it's a pretty different picture. Caps, now they've got more caps going on over here than at Yankee Stadium. So what, am I, what do I mean by that? Well, take for example, the social care cap. This is capped at about 86,000 pounds, I think. Now, if you're someone, so. If you're someone who has £84,000 in your bank account to put towards your care when you get older, then that completely wipes you out. But if you're someone who's got a hundred million sitting in your bank account and the cap is 86 grand, then you're just like, fantastic. So all these caps, which are in theory designed to help prevent costs running completely out of control, basically mean that people who have more money are invariably going to be on the hook for less of that complexity. The tax system is, you know, it's one of those things where it's been built on over time. Now, this creates a whole load of potential opportunities for loopholes or for taxes to be superseded with one another. And so this complexity really just, I mean, it, frankly, it gives rise to the possibility of being exploited, maybe not in an illegal way, but maybe in a sort of abusive way. We've seen plenty of instances over the last few years of people, often celebrities, getting caught out in these tax schemes that may not necessarily be illegal, but they are certainly not, uh, you know, equitable by any stretch of the imagination. So we've talked about how the tax system ultimately stops you from building longer term wealth. We've talked about how income is taxed very differently when compared to businesses or when compared to investment income. We've talked about how labour and capital are not taxed in the same way. We've talked about some of the specific taxes that really help to entrench some of the problems that we see in the wider economy. So what can you do about it? Well, the next thing you can do is watch the second video in our series. So taxes basically one of the biggest expenses that you're going to have to pay out across your whole life. So it only makes sense to want to try and legally, legally reduce your tax bill. And with so many of the tax thresholds having been frozen over the last, say, two or three years, it's become more important than ever to try and manage your tax liabilities as much as possible. We're going to be going through some of the key tax busting methods that you can be employing to try and reduce your overall tax bill. And I know that the tax code looks more complicated than a Game of Thrones family tree, but let's just be clear right from the off. This is not necessarily tax advice. People's individual tax advice will be based on a plethora of potential situations. It will be very circumstantial. Make sure you are seeking professional and qualified tax advice. Let's get into it. ICES. Now, don't get me wrong. It is insane that you're not taught about this in school. It's insane that you have to go out and specifically research these things. You have to educate yourself in the tax system in order to take advantage of it. So let's just get that out of the way. It's annoying that you even have to go through this process but until that changes let's go through that process so the isa has come under a lot of scrutiny not least of all from me recently the new british isa being a bit of a shit isa to be honest so the first thing you can be doing is making contributions to your isa now your isa is effectively a government sanctions tax wrapper which means that any money that you put in there up to the limit of £20,000 a year all the income and all the gains that you receive from it will be exempt from tax the ISA is one of the most important 
assets when it comes to building longer term wealth and that's for a few reasons the first is that unlike a pension it's taxed kind of differently in that you have to contribute to it post-tax but it's got the benefits on the other side the other thing is you can access that money so unlike a pension which you can't access until you're 55 and then it's going up to 58 in 2028 i think so you can have access to that money as and when you need it and the other thing is there are so many different kinds of ISA. So the first thing I think you should be doing is sit looking at all your ISA allowances and seeing which ones you're gonna be able to maximize. If you are just hypothetically in a family, say it's you, your partner, and two kids, you get 20,000 pounds for you, 20,000 pounds for your partner. If your kids are under 18, you get 9,000 pounds for one kid, 9,000 pounds for another kid. You start to add in your ISA allowances and it tots up to like 60 grand or something. Now, clearly you have to be making a load of money to be able to maximize all of those allowances but the key point is making sure making sure you're contributing to those can be just such a helpful way to reduce your overall tax bill and i've also seen a bit of hate online for the isa and i don't really understand why i think it's a really good scheme and people are just in denial about it you know they're up a river in egypt pensions now i can hear people's eyes glazing over the groans you know i get it pensions are filled with intercontinental ballistic boredom but stick with me on this one let's just very quickly do a recap in the first video in this series we talked we went into this in a lot more detail so make sure you check out that video once you're done here let's just say you make about sixty thousand pounds because of the way marginal tax bands work the first twelve and a half thousand you'll pay no tax on the next thirty seven and a half thousand you'll pay about twenty percent on and the final nine or ten thousand you'll pay forty percent on so what it can be worth doing is using your pension contributions to manage your tax to manage your taxable income so what do i mean by that pension contributions are exempt from tax so if you earn sixty thousand pounds and you want to make a five thousand pound pension contribution then your taxable income will only be fifty five thousand pounds so by making a pension contribution it takes you just below that limit and you still get access to that benefit so using pension contributions can be a really key way where you can still get the benefit of that money but obviously as we just mentioned with pensions you can't necessarily access that money until you're in your 50s so it's just another thing to bear in mind. Now, the benefit about pensions is they are virtually the only investment vehicle in the land that will guarantee you 100% return on your money. Because if you contribute some money to your pension and your employer matches, then you've doubled your money straight off the bat. So pensions can be a, an extremely powerful way to not only manage your tax bill, but to also build longer term wealth and help to really secure your financial future in retirement. Annual pension allowance, mother of per another pension point i hear you saying but this one's an important one so the personal pension allowance was basically basically used to be up to forty thousand pounds they've now for 23 24 tax year increased it to sixty thousand pounds but the benefit here is that you can contribute two thousand two hundred two thousand eight hundred eighty pounds to a pension every year and the government will top up an additional 720 pounds a year so again it's another small benefit which just making sure you're taking advantage of and don't forget if you're a limited company then making con pension contributions are tax deductible so you can get a bit of a double whammy benefit there by reducing your overall corporate tax liability pension carry forward allowance oh odin's raven right i promise this is the last pension one so this basically means unlike a lot of other allowances like the isa allowance with the isa allowance it's twenty thousand pounds a year every year but unused allowance balances can't get carried forward into the next tax year so it's a case of if you don't use it, you lose it. But when it comes to pension allowances, you can go back and use unused balances for the last three years. So conceivably, now that we sit at £60,000, there's £180,000 that is potentially up for grabs. And this can really help you manage your tax bill downwards. Now, one of the key things about pensions, which we should also come on to uh, later on in the video, is that they are also exempt from inheritance tax. So this can be a really good way of just, if you're later on in life, you've got chunks there, just putting it in there can be just a much more effective way of building longer term wealth. Getting paid the right way. As we talked about in the first video, link in the description or something, making sure you're getting paid the right way can be really key to what you're doing here. So for this YouTube channel, if I was to buy everything and pay for it personally, I would earn a salary, get taxed, and then have to pay for all those expenses. Whereas if I'm working through a limited company, I can receive revenue, I can pay for all these camera, microphone, lights, blah, 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 and then pay tax on the balance. So making sure that you're getting paid through a mechanism that really makes sense for you is going to be really important. Again, there are all sorts of things you can do with, and again, this is not necessarily tax advice, but if you want to get an electric car or a plug-in hybrid, you can pay for it through your company and pay very low benefit in kind. There are just 
all sorts of things that you can do there. So make sure you're talking to someone who is specialized in such tax affairs because as I said at the beginning of the video, in my view, having a full-time PAYE job and also operating your side hustle from a limited company I think can really mean that you're able to take the benefits of both of those income generating and wealth creating opportunities. Claiming household bills. Now, if you're a home worker, there are some ways that you can claim your household bills and there are two methods that HMRC goes for. There's the simple flat rate, which is HMRC's preference, I think, and is generally easier to calculate. This means that you can claim back a portion depending on how often you work from home and claim some of those back on your tax form. And then the second method is a bit more complicated, which is you work out the total costs of running your home in its entirety and how much of those are for personal. So again, seek all the necessary tax advice, but this can be another good way to manage your tax bill. Marriage tax allowance. Now, if you're in a marriage or civil partnership, then provided one of you makes under the 12,000-ish pounds personal tax allowance, you can transfer up to 10% of that to your partner, provided they make below the higher income tax threshold of 50,000 pounds. And maybe the last and most important piece of advice is speak to an advisor. Speak to, you know, we covered this in another video, uh, this one just here, where we discussed there are some things in life that are worth paying for that can start to quite quickly pay for themselves. And I think speaking to a tax expert, someone who can really comb through your finances, who can really understand where all your money is, where it's coming from, and make sure that you're arranging your tax affairs in a way that makes sense, I think is just, it, it feels like it's the sort of thing that only the rich people do, but I think maybe we've got it the wrong way around. Maybe some of those people are rich because they've had the benefit of this advice. So I think it can be done reasonably inexpensively. As always, make sure you're seeking the help of a qualified and registered professional who comes recommended is always a bonus. And just see what you can do on this one. So in this video, we've talked about some of the ways that you can legally pay less tax with tax day coming up. But even if you're watching this in the Starship Enterprise or something, still watch the video, still take heed of some of the tips, and it might be that you can save yourself money in future tax periods. Thanks very much for watching. Peace.